Arsenal defeated 1-0 by Aston Villa. Arsenal had had that run, Janish, of seven unbeaten. And now it's three without a win. And two of those back-to-back losses, including today's uh, game. What does that tell us about this Arsenal side? Well, I think it's, uh, okay, it tells us uh, more of what we already knew, right? I mean, Arsenal are a mid-table team. They're going to be there. They were there last year, and unfortunately, that's going to continue. I think from time to time, you've mentioned they had a good run uh, before the back-to-back losses. I think we we are willing ourselves to believe that maybe we see Arsenal on the way back. Maybe we will see the, the remnants of Arsenal of old, and those glimpses are there, but they're just not good enough. I, I think when I think think of them, there's a deep-rooted institutional negligence, if you will, uh, on the part of Arsenal that Mikel Arteta is trying to change. And we hold on to these little things, even in today's game from time to time, you saw it. Uh, but I think that's going to take a long, long time. It's just that, you know, it is Arsenal. It's a big name. And, and sometimes we think that, you know, they should be doing better. But reality is different, Kay. And I think that's what we continue to see from game to game. It's never good to concede a goal so early at the start of a game like this and what happened there. But it wasn't a good goal to concede at all for the Gunners, was it? But of course, but that's just your typical arsenal. And I I don't want to put the boot in because I do believe that it takes time. I've been in the dressing room. I've been around teams, you know, of my own where things weren't going well and the expectations were high, but they're way too high, right? And then you say to yourself, where is the accountability? You know, how can you possibly start like this? You know, it can happen to any team, right? To concede early, but when your arsenal and narrative, the narrative is already there, you know, the records, obviously, right? Nine, I mean, Arsenal had more records than any team in Premier League history. And then you start a game like this, after what happened against Wolves, you say to yourself, that sort of lack of concentration, right? Cedric, that terrible pass, Rob Holding, who I think is actually having a pretty decent season, kind of just watching that, you know, that go in, if you will, not pressuring the ball. And you say to yourself, how can you possibly start like this? That's what I mean, that lack of culture and leadership, that's pervasive. It really is, you see it. And you know what? I'll say the same if Arsenal go on a two or three game winning run, because you can see that it's deep rooted. You can see around the team, For example, you see this Villa team. Dean Smith has done more in the last six months than Arteta or Arsenal in general have done in years right now. I mean, look at Ali Watkins. I mean, exceptional, right? I mean, he can do everything. Jack Grealish, I take him on any team. I mean, you can see the composure, you know, from him. You could see how dangerous. I think you were telling me before uh, we chatted that, that, you know, Ali Watkins has more, had more shots. Uh, on target not, than the whole Arsenal target team. Than the whole Arsenal, but I don't think we're surprised. So if you look what, how quickly Dean Smith and Aston Villa have turned this around, uh, I don't think we should be surprised. So it, it's troubling. The only thing I will say, there's some positives with Arsenal. And I think I, for one, look at Arsenal as, as progress. I'm looking to the next season and perhaps even perhaps even a se- season beyond that. Unfortunately, Arsenal fans won't have it. God only knows why. Some, anyway. So talking about the positives, just for a moment, for Arsenal, Martin Odegaard's got to be one of those today, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, but, you know, the, the only trouble with that is he, he's on loan. I mean, you know, if Real Madrid are any smart and we'll see things developing with Zinedine Zidane, they're struggling as well. They're trying to implement young players, uh, which haven't had a chance at Real Madrid. You know, who's to say that he's not going to be gone at the end of the season, right? So, but it is a positive it, it, because, I mean, he came in today and you can see the quality, uh, a couple looks on goal, uh, right? But I just don't know if you can count on him you know, in the years to come. And for this season, it's too late. Arsenal are no longer top six teams, only in name. Do you think Arsenal um, are actually being hurt by the fact that they're not taking as many shots as they should be? Or they're not getting in the positions to do that, maybe? Yes, I I, th- I think that's part of it. And, and also, I think that, and, and this was a good example of Aston Villa today, is that teams don't worry or not af- they're not afraid of arsenal anymore just 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 look at early in the game how villa pressed arsenal 
in the past, it would have been unthinkable because Arsenal would play around you, right? And and the only reason that the game was in the balance is because Villa still felt like they wanted to get another one because if they were when they were in the low block, there was no worries from Arsenal. But they they gave Arsenal actually some possession and some decent look, which some will say, well, look, Arsenal had their chances. You know, at times they combined well, but that was, in my opinion, more of a thing that Villa said, look we can get another one, right? Because Jack Grealish and Ali Watkins had so many chances on the counter that they opened themselves up uh, to be counterattacked, if you will. So, I mean, this is just gloomy. It, it, not surprising to me in, in so many ways because, uh, because as I've said, there, there's remnants of that good arsenal that I think some of us still think of and, and we want to see that and we, we neglect to, to really look at reality and say, this is a pretty average team because you, you have to admit that without being sensational. Uh, Villa have now done the double over them this season in the Premier League. Do they finish ahead of them in the table at the end of the season? I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, you know, they were, uh, they had a blimp of their own, right? I'm coming into the game. They've lost four out of six, uh, of course, but that just goes to show. I mean, you lose four out of six in the Premier League, you're still ahead of Arsenal and you beat them head to head, you know, both times. And, and you know, uh, and you look at Arsenal, they have a couple games, two or three games more than Villa, right? If memory serves right. So, I mean, I look at this this team and and I don't see any reason why Villa shouldn't finish ahead of Arsenal. Yeah, some work still to be done for Mikel Arteta at Arsenal, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot of season to go, so Arsenal fans can maybe stay a little bit positive. I think as neutrals, Kay, I mean, look, I'm, I'm one of those where, where I do remember the great Arsenal teams, and I do hope that they come back because they think, you know, the league will be better for it. It's a massive name that, of course, attracts uh, eyeballs, and, and everybody wants to see them because that also would mean that, you know, the Premier League would be as competitive, even more competitive, when you have the big guns uh, uh, playing well. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.